Welcome back to the shed. Uh, it's been a year since we installed this um, power wall that is still makeshift, it's still not installed properly on the shed. Uh, but we're changing the BMS over from a standalone, it's just preset, you can't do anything with it, to a uh, smart BMS. Now, there's been a few drums with the battery, because you can't tell it what to do. Uh, so, it's time now to change it over. This one's also got an active balancer in it. So instead of the passive balancers this has, actively balances the battery um, by swapping power from a high cell to a low cell. Anyway, I'll uh, do a bit of an unboxing and we'll have a look at the power wall before I get into how we're going to change the BMS over. Alright, here it is. I've actually already cut it open just to make sure that it was actually the BMS in this box because it's, it's Chinese right. I know it's just BMS but from China, you don't know. Anyway, right, let's get to take a close look. This year, this comes in a nice little box. Put that aside. This is the, the, uh, how you read it? Try and get it in the shot. Jing Kong, the, the JK BMS. It's a nice little cover. Are you really kidding These are temperature sensors. And uh, that's that's the box there. That's it. That's balancer and everything all in one. Uh, tells you constant current, 200 amps, 200 amps at 48 volts. It's huge. It's like I don't know. It's over 7,000 watts. 8s to 20s. So we have 16s. So that's perfect. Comes with your. Uh, your balance leads or your sensor leads comes with a whatever that is don't really know whatever that one is i think think those two are for communications and then this is a i believe it's an on off button so you can actually turn this bms on and off you used to have to short these ones with four or five volts more than the battery pack so you used to have to do something in series and it's a pain to turn on, so I hope it turns on. And then some other thing as well. Instructions. Oh, it's, it's to the build. So here's the MPP solar inverter charger. Um, a circuitry for the shed. It's more to calm us. Yeah, like I said, makeshift. This is just a uh, shunt. It's a guide. Uh, guide only. It's not 100% accurate, but at least it's a good guide so we can do whatever washing, whatever we need to do. Just make sure it has the power on them cloudy days. Um, there is a discrepancy in the voltage. This will say 54 volts, and this uh, here will say go yeah, through the menu it's, it's normally a couple of volts extra well, I reckon it's 54 and a half now but there is a discrepancy between this and that so over the course of like a year the battery's actually slowly dissipated and become way out of balance because it actually hasn't been fully getting charged when it does get fully charged so we're going to change it with a BMS so that we can fully control the battery of change this so it does it goes up now up a couple of volts more than what the battery floats at just so that i know that it's getting charged and if it's an over voltage situation the bms cuts in anyway so that's not a problem so you can hear the thing roaring that's the charge controller going off in it and uh yeah this is little screen here tells you what it's doing um, at the moment we're doing 179 volts from PV, 4.4 amps, and that's 4.43 amps at 179 volts. Uh, that's input, 1.5 kilowatts. And the battery is receiving, according to the inverter, 29 amps. We look up at the, um, uh, the shunt. It's uh, following closely, 18, 16, so that might be the discrepancies in is more so the amps rather than the volts. What we're using, 914 watts. 
there you go, battery voltage 53.8. This other one says 53.4. So at least it's above it. So we can actually charge. Alright, here's the battery. It's inside this box. And uh, lift him up. There you go. So you've got the the shunt there to the very um, right of the shot going down the BMS in the middle and then you got the two um, passive balances on the left hand side and they just they dissipate the energy they don't, they're not doing anything else but dissipating uh, energy so basically we're just going to take those two out and replace it with one BMS and uh, yeah well let's get to it eh? we'll put a little chalk in here and we'll We'll get to it. I have to find the covers for it so we don't accidentally drop something on top of the battery and short everything out. Simple piece of cardboard will be fine. Okay, here we go. Got the safety box. Near the generator in the background because I've shut the battery off. It's just in case it kids turn a big load on like the microwave. But uh, yeah, I'll just take this old BMS out first. And uh, we'll go from there, start putting in some leads and whatnot. So, yeah, right. Go through the power drill. check if I've got logs. It'll be very disappointing if I don't have any logs. Less than not the other job, the rest of my logs. Building another battery at another place. Okay, so doing the balance leads. Main circuitry out of the way. Just be balance leads here, which is Hoping they're long enough to put out here. Be very careful not to nick anything here because this battery is fully charged. Ah, we got cell cell one should be instructions here. So one for the negative, not the so one there. Security has two on it, which is good. One of them has to be on the negative. Of course it does.
Africa. Hot then. This boots are a while, should be fine, but it's People that have been doing this for a lot longer than me can obviously make it a lot neater. But we're having a go, it's the same thing. And we're back. Just, uh, the last bit we just tied the dot up. And I just went away to the workbench and I uh, got the BMS. I just crimped some uh, cable logs through it, two wires into the one cable log and I'm just going to go... I did have uh, bus bars for them to go on, so that'll be, you know, but... I haven't come yet, they're in the mail still, so I'm just going to nut and bolt them together, tape them. It's a bit, uh, yeah, it's a bit heck going, but it will work. main part is to have it work and you can still hear the generator go in the background uh, that's what we got just straight through on the generator at the moment because this is our power so all part of the fun like that uh, other way, we'll go the other way and yeah of course it's like way too long but big, these are big surfaces going on a big surface. The bolt, the bolt doesn't have to be huge because it's uh, the two surfaces are the lugs in which we're concerned about here. And as tight as we can. Tape for safety. I'm actually going to tape this. Um, on off button as well because I don't want to shorten them and I don't really should get like a board or something for it to, for it to go on a little plate or something so just because it's the on off button and you never know what will happen Tape up these other things that could potentially short on the battery. Do not want that to happen. I don't know what this is for. This is for something, and I don't know. I can't read Chinese, it's in Chinese. Pull out the on button or the reset button, then you got RS for whatever it's called can rs485 and then you've got actually two temperature sensors upper and lower see how these cleans and we don't have to worry about them too much but i will set them because these batteries don't like charging under zero will they ever get to here no uh, we do get in the minus one two in winter time but I doubt inside this cover and all that sort of stuff but I'm gonna set them up anyway can okay so everything's now safe I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna do here to mount it uh, it'll be something like over here a bit ah better better make that safe with the tape I suppose yeah, you never know what'll happen really don't think that's going to go anywhere. Could have potentially put this straight onto the uh, shunt there, but I want the ability to change it. So when I get the bus bar, little one with two on it, 
I'll do that. Now, I'm going to come up with a sort of a spot to sort of put that. Yeah, there's looking pretty good for me. A little bit ahead of myself. Yes. Okay. Plug it in. Plug it in. BMS should go without the rest of the battery plugged in. So what I'm going to do is just this. Okay, sort out the conglomerate. So it's big, huge plug, and they go in that way. The little tabs you can't stuff it up. Can't stuff it up, and then you go to push it in. And it's a bit tight. Should turn on. Ah, beeped. That's uh, that's on now. That's bloody beautiful. That's really good. The old way of doing these, you had to short four to five volts uh, more than the battery pack from the P minus to this 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 one over here that goes to the main battery pack. So you had to make it so that if it was a 50 volt battery, 54 volts would turn your uh, BMS on. Now they give you this U-Butte button, and even got a light on it. So, how good is that? We'll put it back up here. Alright, that's it there. This is a new BMS for me, so I'm going to sign out. You have to see how we changed over the BMS. It's a little bit ugly. It's not as neat as it should be, but... Uh, yeah, when I get those bits that I'm waiting for, some are coming from China and other places, so we'll uh, have a proper bus bar there and make it neat. But for now, at least, my family will have power again and will work, and this BMS is um, controllable. So when I'm not here, you can get on with your app and make it work. Funny, you stop recording and something happens. I was just leaning on my safety box. It must have broke through the... Uh, plastic sheathing on the outside, the insulation part of the wire, and I just heard this uh, smoke came out, and I was like, oh no, I've blown something up, but I blew up a balance lead. Thankfully it didn't fry the BMS, it still has a light. But uh, I got a nice weld mark just there, and I'm now I've got to get a little joiner. Anyway, so much for the safety mat.